preserved, uh, post-autopsy, post-embalmed. The embalming was good. We were expecting that formalin fumes would be overwhelming. We encountered that a lot. But uh, this time around, the body was, was uh, right for examination. Okay? And so we documented everything, uh, the embalming sites, the autopsy, incisions, and all the details are in the report. Okay, that's why it's six pages long. Uh, it's very much detailed. I'll just focus on the front sheet where it has the uh, pathologic diagnosis and what we call the opinion. All right? And so to summarize, to summarize, the most pertinent findings would be, number one, history of asphyxia by plastic bag suffocation. Two, pulmonary congestion, edema, and hemorrhages. Three, schistosomiasis of the liver. It's an incidental finding. It's a parasitic infection. I believe he comes from Leyte, Samar area, and that's kind of endemic in that area. Number four, status post-autopsy. Number five, status post-embalming. Number six, evidence of medical intervention consisting of a needle puncture mark on the dorsal right hand. Well, this is, I saw this on, you know, zooming in on the pictures, and I'm not too sure at this point if the Bucor Hospital uh, did this, because sometimes when you bring bodies to the hospital, they automatically uh, try and look for a vein there. I don't have records of what they did, what they saw in that hospital, but this is not really that significant. All right, and then I have here an opinion and it reads, this is the case of a 42-year-old male who was an inmate incarcerated at the New Believed Prison when he was allegedly found unresponsive and pronounced dead at the NBP hospital on October 18, 2022. The cause of death was certified as, in quotation marks, dead on arrival, undetermined for autopsy. The embalmed remains were autopsied on October 20, 2022 by the National Bureau of Investigation. A second autopsy was conducted on October 26, 2022. There is information that he expressed fear for his life shortly before his demise and that he died from suffocation by means of a plastic bag over his head. The autopsy findings showed no gross morphologic cause of death. And this is consistent with the reported asphyxia. Limitations were encountered in the examination due to the postmortem interval, the previous embalming, and autopsy. Preliminary urine toxicology showed methamphetamine. Based on available information regarding the circumstances surrounding death, the manner is homicide. Okay, so when I was constantly discussing uh, the case with Secretary Rebulia, and at first I said I did not find anything, meaning he was not sick of something serious, uh, no significant uh, injuries also. So external and internal findings were negative, and at first I was about to say that. That's it. There's no cause of death, and the manner would be classified as what we call undetermined. However, information trickled in. Uh, I noted it here, and this is very important, that he had an inkling that he was in danger, and true enough, shortly after, he died. And this, uh, this sense, this feeling of impending death actually was uh, transmitted to someone and this information is credible. So I have to consider that. And, but I, so I was about to write as manner of death, probable homicide. However, again, additional information was that uh, there's an account of someone now explaining how he died. And I remember Secretary Remulia asking me, plastic bag. And I said, puede. Actually, 
pwedeng pwede. So when you look at the case like this, it's totality of evidence. When I refer to manner, it is how the person died. Cause would be why. Okay? And to say how, you have to look at everything, including the circumstances. And I really had to factor in the two things that he knew he was about to die, and he did. And two, that uh, someone actually offered an explanation of, you know, cause. And taking everything into consideration, it is consistent. No morphologic findings. And yes, putting a plastic bag over one's head it can be very effective.